Hey guys, uh, this is Darth Vader Z from MasterPlanet.com. Um, this is not the real intro to the video, though I need to explain something real quick. Uh, this ended up being a lot longer than I expected it to, so this will effectively be part one of the video, and at the end of the video, you will proceed to part two. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the now semi-automated user tutorial for Acid Pro, or Music Studio 8.0. Um... I'm going to pretty much be ad-libbing this guy, so bear with me, since we have a noob on the forum that feels like he needs to have some basic questions answered about the program. Um, to open the program, we will double-click it, and then it will open, which every genius should know this. As you can see, I've already got a, a track already that I've been working on for a while here on here, and we're going to go ahead and clear that off with the new button. Now, this will give us the blank staging area, along with... All your controls, your file browser, everything else that you're going to want. Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and say, before you start anything as a new user to the program, make a file to keep all of your material in. I have it in a folder called Acid, because I just pretty much use everything with Acid Pro or Music Studio. And I keep all of my loops and musical samples and everything else I work on in this folder, even stuff that I was using for video, like the Video Copilot series and their uh, soundtrack uh, cinema, cinema packs that they created. Doing this will keep all of your your files and everything else you have in a neat little way to find everything. Like all of this here's eight packs that have been out so far I've kept track of. Well, but continuing any further about explaining what we can do with this program and what what its primary use is going to be. Let's first get you some some sound material uh, because if you're apparently new to the program, you probably have nothing. And so what we're going to do is go to the Acid Planet homepage. And if you're apparently using Acid Pro or Acid Music Studio, then you've apparently probably been to this website or if you've torrented off of Demonoid, Pirate Bay, or one of your other favorites, favorite uh, torrenting websites. On this link here under Free Downloads, we're going to click on this and go to Free 8-Packs. And there will be a one eight pack usually usually per week that will be put up until they decide to take a vacation, and then you know not exactly tell you where they're what they're doing, and they kind of leave us out of the loop on that. Also, you can go to Get Loops, which will take you to the Sony website page, and you can browse several different sound libraries and different things that they've put out over the years. Uh, some are pretty cheap, and there's also demos uh, from each sound series as well. And apart from, apart from the free 8-packs, if you've downloaded the trial version of As Express uh, or Music Studio 8.0, there might have been something you missed on this page right here, which is right here. Uh, you can download this. This is a collection of old 8-packs, and it's actually several decent sound series um, that are worthy of getting just to have some beginning material to, to get your feet wet with. Uh, also... If you're looking for some free sample material, um, primeloops.com has some decent stuff and I'm trying to think of some other decent loop sites uh, for loop-based creation, uh, but none are sticking out to my head right now. And there's also, of course, the contest files too. Every contest that comes out has the contest loops plus some bonus loops that Sony puts with all of their contest files for the website as well. Alright, so after finding all that media, now we find our way back into Music Studio. And from here, before we want to start building a track, of course, you would click New. And sometimes you can enable this where whenever you have new pop-up, you can put your title of your song, the artist, the engineer, copyright information, everything about your song that you want to put in here. Uh, and putting the sample rate, bit depth for the audio, uh, and where to save recorded files for the information. Um... This can all be changed at any point in time. There's no point to do it before you work on it. I know I don't name a song until after I'm finished. I don't know about the rest of the people on Acid Planet. I don't really approach a, making a song with a name. Under the options here, we will just go to Preferences, and we can change every parameter on the program to, uh, to better suit your liking before you get ready to actually make your songs. Up here we find different things from changing in how waveforms are shown, uh, choosing your sound card, let's say if you're using an external, so for some reason you've gotten a different sound card that you're using, change latency issues, 
uh, enabling MIDI devices if you have any enabled or set up. Uh, you can also change all your save locations for recording under folders. Um, this is information for the preview for sound previews and changing the display colors, icon saturations, etc. etc. All right, to open something in Music Studio, I'm going to go ahead and open Solar Cycles, which is the newest 8 pack that was released uh, for this on the 14th. And when we do this, it'll ask if I want to make any changes. We say no. Right away, what we can tell is the tempo has changed, our time signature has remained the same, and our key has been changed uh, to alter that of the track properties. Uh, we can get a better view of the song or the made track by clicking the zoom out over here. We can zoom out and view the whole thing, or we can scroll in and view individual individual waveforms down to the hundreds of a second if you really want. This becomes excessively useful um, when creating loop sections if you want to chop loops up out of your out of certain pieces of songs. Well, it can also become tediously annoying and loud. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to clear this off here. And we're just going to open one of these random files here. See, we can see that it's playing right now in the preview box over here. And when we double click it, it adds it to the track list. And now if we paint it, I'm going to take a little pencil here. We'll paint it on the track here. We can see that now we're playing in our preview audio over here and our master audio over here, which these, each channel that you, in, you install into the into the bus over here pops down into your, into your mixer. So if I open this one, it'll open everything under here. The file name is shown at the bottom, and that's just where you'll find it if you so need to show it. You can collapse and expand these views. It's great and wonderful. Not really. I don't really ever dick with it that much. All right. And now what we're going to do, since I've shown you that, we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to clear this off here one more time. And I'm going to find a drum pattern here. We're going to put this in here. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the tools real quick and show you how they are neat and useful and all that kind of crap. Um, normally what you're going to have selected is the pencil tool or the draw tool, and we're going to draw a loop section here. And this is one section. Now you can see I have free forming and it's just, it's going as far as I want it to. What most people prefer to use, especially if you're working with loop based tools, is this right here, which is the snap tool, which will then snap it to these little bars that you're seeing, you see crosshatch bars here. Um, you can also change the dimension of this by zooming in, and then the bars become smaller and smaller and smaller, and allows you for greater working. You can also see that the program also normally puts a, a crossfade section on most loops on its own. So we're going to take this normal section right here, and then we'll go ahead and explain the next little tool that it is up top here. And this is the automatic crossfade. Without that, you can see that I can just put this over the top of this and nothing happens. Enabling the automatic crossfade makes this one pan out while this one pans in and then it overlays on top of each other, which is useful for hiding certain effects, kind of, or just looping certain things like uh, pads, which have a fade out section after so many bars and then you can just overlay it with the same pad and then just keep it rolling whenever you get to that point. Um, we can hit V for a volume pan. We can change where the volume sits normally at. And then you can double click on this bar to make lines, to change the pan to where the pan will then jump. Uh, with and the pan will go up and down. The volume is loud, the volume is quiet. The volume is loud, the volume is quiet. Uh, we'll go ahead and get V and get rid of that. And now the volume is this back. Well, the pan's still there, but. It is not visible anymore if you hit V and get rid of it. There is a faster way to get rid of these things, and I don't remember what it is. Someone's probably going to chastise me later on the forum for this. There's also the pan, and pan does the same thing. You can double click and set points in the pan. This will cause it to go left to right, 
and you can see the you can see these represented by your your meters actually will vary differently based on where your panning is sitting hopefully if not you've broken something and we'll get into that part later um i'm gonna delete that the next little tool up here is the selection tool selection tool is kind of useful if you've got several things that you're working with and you draw all over it and you're like oh i want to select all this and move it over well then you can just grab it and move it over uh, old school way of doing this for me is clicking one, hold shift, click, click, and click, and then you can do the same thing. Then you can just move them how you wish. And of course, there is the handy dandy eraser tool, which is used for handy dandily erasing things. The eraser tool also works with the snap tool, where if it is selected, it will it will delete snap sections uh, based on your selections. 